Hello, everyone. Welcome to another great Global Handling webinar event. Um, my name is Triami Viana, and I'm your moderator for today's session. So for today's agenda, I'm joined with Dr. Haroon and Dr. Salinka as our speakers for today. Dr. Haroon is one of the co-founders and tutors over at WH Medical, who is partnering up with us currently and providing applicants with training courses and exams preparation. In today's session, we will go uh, to do a quick introduction from global, uh, Great Global Handling from Salinka. And that would be 30 minutes. And then the next, oh, sorry, five minutes. Sorry, I apologize. And then the next will be a 30 minutes uh, session with Dr. Haroon regarding life as a doctor in the UK, um, followed by a five minute transition break, then another 30 minute with GGH introduction on the medical training program. And then Lastly, but not least, will be a 20 minutes of Q&A session. The, the entire webinar is scheduled to run for 90 minutes and speaking, um, we're going to speak like in English mostly the whole time. But if you guys have questions in Bahasa, please do note it down. We can help translate it um, for you and to explain to Dr. Harun itself. All right, um, let's get to it then. Dr. Uh, Salinka, take away. Hi everyone. Oh wow, why is it so blurry? <laughs> oh wow, okay, well, as long as you guys can. Um, hi everyone, I'm Dr. Salinka. I'm currently uh, doing my internship year in Indonesia because I want to continue my career in the UK as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and um, welcome everyone. I hope we can deliver every uh, every information that you might need, that you might want to uh, know, to get to get you prepared for a, a, every journey to get your career in the UK. So if you guys have any questions, please um, just raise your hand or just knock it down on the chat. Um, in the chat section there we can help you to translate even uh, if you want to write it out on uh, Bahasa so it's totally fine and um, I hope you guys enjoy this webinar and um, yeah thank you everyone appreciate it to be here Amy thank you back to you thank you very much. sorry thank you very much very much, Dr. Salinka. Now moving on, Dr. Haroon, he will speak regarding about life as a doctor in the UK. To you, Dr. Haroon. Thank you. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, as Amy said, my name is uh, Dr. Haroon, but I'm a GP in the UK and also a uh, trainer and co-founder of WH Medical Courses. We're a UK-based uh, company which delivers training and education to people from the age of 17 all the way to postgraduate training, uh, GP exams uh, and medical school final preparation as well. So I had a look at the, um, the, the things we're going to discuss today and I thought it would be worth just having a sort of a conversational um, approach towards today's webinar. Essentially, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, the FY2 year, um, a bit about training programs and then go into what it's like to work in the UK in a bit more detail as well. So I'm sure as you all know, FY, so when um, an IMG or an, an international medical graduate, when they start working in the UK, uh, they will start at the FY2 level, which stands for foundation year two doctor. Um, and essentially this is the second year of you being a doctor, the first year being the FY1 doctor. The FY1 and FY2 uh, years replaced the old house officer uh, training program, which is still uh, active in, in lots of other countries. I'm not sure if, actually no, so you guys have the internship model uh, more than anything else. So the FY2 year essentially is split up into three rotations. Each rotation is four months long. And hopefully you'll get a wide flavor of specialties. There'll be one medical specialty, hopefully one surgical specialty, and a lot of times something like general practice or a specialty uh, program that you may be interested in. So that's usually the training FY2 uh, program. 
Now, obviously, for international med medical graduates, uh, you have to take the IELTS um, or the um, or any other validated English uh, language exam, like the OEC. Um, and essentially, uh, for FY2, you need um, 7.5s for the training program on the IELTS score. But if you uh, if you score slightly below that, if you have scored seven in each domain and 7.5 overall, then you can actually enter via a non-training program. Uh, so non-training FY2 uh, can be your sort of entry route into training as well. Um, essentially, the FY2 year is it's uh, it's a junior doctor year, so it's very well supported. You'll have uh, lots of senior support with by a consultant, registrar, and SHO as well. Um, you'll be working in a team of doctors, nurses. So um, if you have any questions ever, the advice always is ask when you're not sure. Um, and you'll never find people unwilling to give help because the centre of all of our attention is the patient's welfare and well-being. So uh, from that regard, it's a really nice system to work in and really looks after people when they first come in from a different healthcare system. You also have to remember that the NHS employs almost, I think, two million people, of which half of them are non-UK. Um, they've come from countries for, other than the UK. So the NHS is very well uh, developed in terms of uh, uh, managing international med medical graduates and walking them through their process until they feel fully settled uh, into the system. So one of the things I was going to talk about um, on, the, on the TOR was um, education and training was the first uh, topic on there. Essentially, the way this happens in the UK is via a learning portfolio and uh, an e-portfolio, online portfolio, um, which will have lots of aspects on it. So one of the things on there will be the ability to record any interesting cases, but not just to record the case, but also reflect on it. What did you learn from that particular case or that experience or that interaction with a, a fellow doctor or a, a consultant? So it's all about reflecting on your experiences we can all write down, you know, I saw a patient on the ward, they were very interesting, they had Guillain-Barre syndrome. That's well and good, but what did you take away from that? What was your learning? And that's the whole essence of the online, of the e-portfolio. And this portfolio uh, you maintain over the course of the year, at the end of which it is assessed by a, uh, um, a, program, a program director along with your educational supervisor. Apart from the cases, you'll also record on their uh, CBDs, so case-based discussions that you have with uh, your consultants or registrars, any procedures that you do, so direct obs directly observed procedures, um, such as lumbar punctures, or if you're doing an anesthetics job, if you do any intubations, then you record these on there. Um, and also you will do a once a year feedback. So you'll be, uh, you will send a link to 10, 10 to 15 colleagues um, not just medical, so there'll be nursing colleagues, doctors, ward clerks, uh, so a 360 view of who you are as a doctor but also as a person and you'll have to pass this as well. So all your colleagues will have to give you favourable feedback to say that you're um, a good colleague to work with. So that's, that's also really important, so stay on everyone's good side, be polite, be friendly, be helpful and you'll find you have no problems with that as well. So the point of the uh, learning and e-portfolio is to develop a, a well-rounded understanding of you as a person and a doctor. So what they're hoping to see is development, right? So over the course of your year, they want to see how you've developed, what experiences you've had, um, what did you learn from them? Also, the way you write, the way you reflect will develop as well. So your first reflection and your first entry will be very different to your 50th or your 100th entry because you'll be much better at it and you'll understand what it is that you're trying to do. So um, in terms of education, um, you'll also have half a day protected teaching every week. So that's uh, three to four hours of teaching uh, in the middle of the week, every week, and this will be protected time. So you will not have your bleep, you will not have, an, have any ward responsibilities. You will attend your teaching, which may be on site, sometimes at a, a nearby uh, hotel or hospital. And uh, this is going to be the crux of your uh, structured learning. So there'll be talks um, and lectures in these three to four hours. Um, and this will be, again, something that you reflect on every week <clears throat> on your e portfolio. 
Then there's also additional studies. So if you're thinking of getting into a particular specialty um, and it's and you know it's a competitive specialty, you, during your FY2 year, you can start to demonstrate um, sort of interests in that regard and things you're doing to develop your skill set in that particular specialty. So you can start thinking ahead as well. Uh, so you don't just think about today and now, but also what your long-term aims and goals are. So during your FY2 year, you will also apply uh, for specialty training. Um, essentially, different specialties work in different ways. So this will all make sense when you're a part of the system. Some specialties re will require to take what's called uh, an MSRA, which is an exam. It's an MCQ-based exam, uh, much like the PLAB one, but a little bit more advanced. And once you've uh, taken that exam, you'll, you'll get a mark or a score, and then you'll be long listed and you'll attend for interviews uh, to different areas within the country uh, that you've ranked according to your preference. And this will hopefully lead you into your specialty training. So to give you an example, general practice, which is what I do, um, psychiatry and many other specialties require the MSRA. But if you want to go into core medical training, that doesn't need the MSRA exam. So this will, like I said, all make sense when you are here and when you're looking at the different specialties and which specialty you'd like to do. Also at that point, your educational supervisor will be a great source of input and information. So they will be able to guide you um, a lot further as well, closer to the time. But obviously, if you're part of the WH family, then you can get in touch with us as well, further down the line to get more input. Because as I said, we do help prepare for the MSRA and other exams and postgraduate uh, specialty exams as well. So um, once you've had your exams, once you've been shortlisted, you will then be offered a place into specialty training. And the first Wednesday of August, you will start your new job as a specialty trainee, be that in general practice, psychiatry, or core medical, whatever. Um, I, this isn't really the right time to go into all the specialties in depth because the programs are all so varied and different. Uh, but I will go through my experiences uh, uh, with general practice uh, in a few minutes as well. The other thing we wanted to go through was um, work culture and expectations was another one of the things that we uh, wanted to discuss. And I appreciate that every country has its own quirks, its own ways of working. So it's really important to know um, how the NHS works. As I said, the NHS is one of the, the biggest employers in the world. So um, over 2 million employees, ranging from doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants, to ward clerks, managers, everyone. And generally speaking, um, the work ethic and culture is the same throughout the organization. So uh, there is an emphasis on dressing appropriately. Uh, so dressing smartly if you're, if you're a male trainee and dressing appropriately if you're a female trainee. Um, there are no lab coats anymore, so we don't wear any white coats. Um, there is a culture of being what's called bare below the elbows. So half sleeve shirts or your sleeves rolled up, no watches, no rings. Uh, this is to reduce uh, infection transmission between patients because we've had significant problems in the past with uh, infections uh, closing down entire wards and sometimes hospitals. So this is one of the infection control mechanisms that we use uh, here in the UK. Um, apart from that, punctuality is extremely important. So you'll know your start time, which is typically nine o'clock in the morning for medical specialties, eight o'clock for surgical specialties. The advice always tends to be arrive early. So you can take off your jacket, make a cup of tea, settle in, uh, and maybe just get ready for the day. Again, your training, your sorry, your start time will depend upon the specialty. So some acute medical specialties will have a uh, almost like a post take first thing in the morning for 15 minutes, which is a, a handover of uh, any acute or unwell patients overnight. And this will be handed over to the relevant teams by the night team in the morning. So you can take notes. You, you then know who your ill patients are, who your well patients are. So you're starting your day with full knowledge of what your uh, patient group is looking like and who you need to focus on first thing in the morning. Some specialties like uh, elderly care or uh, diabetic uh, wards, they don't really have a handover because their patients are generally quite stable. They're usually there for a slightly longer period of time. So they don't really have a handover as much, but acute medical specialties and surgical specialties will do. So once you've had your handover, um, so actually, we'll come back to that in a second. So we're talking about work culture initially. 
So punctuality, very important. Uh, as I mentioned, communication with other members of your team, with, with your nursing colleagues. They may come to you and say, look, I'm really worried about X, Y, or Z patient. Um, there is a tendency sometimes from uh, doctors from certain countries that the relationship between doctor and nurse is a particular type. In the UK, um, there isn't really a hierarchy between doctor and nurses. If anything, as at FY2 level, you should really listen to your nursing colleagues because they've been doing their job for sometimes 10, 20, 30 years. So they will be coming uh, to you with a lot of experience and a lot of, a lot of information. So uh, make sure you listen to their advice it will make your life a lot easier. They're there to help you and to support you as well. The reason for this, for me saying this is because care in the UK is very much patient centered, right? So everything is geared towards looking after the patient. So there's not a lot of, in, well, there is some as with any workplace, but it's not a place with a lot of politics or um, a lot of uh, ego. Uh, it's all about patient centered care. So everyone is trying to do their best to look after their patient and maintain professionalism and ensure best outcomes for their patient. That brings us on to patient dignity. This is another one of the core features of care in the, in the NHS. Uh, we always treat our patients with dignity and uh, communicate information with them clearly, with kindness, with empathy. Uh, so these are again skills that will be tested on your plan as well, interestingly. So it's one of the things they expect you to have day one FY2 is an understanding of patient dignity, how to present yourself, how to communicate in teams. These are all essential aspects of being a junior doctor. So one of the things uh, on the uh, screen that we were looking at discussing today were the benefits for uh, of working for the NHS. Well, like I said, it's one of the biggest employers worldwide. So it's not a company or an organization that's going to run into financial difficulty anytime soon. It's a state-backed uh, healthcare system funding comes directly from government so you're a government employee which also means you have access to the nhs pension uh, if you choose to en enroll in that uh, and i'll talk a bit more about the pension in a second uh, so first i just want to talk about the other main benefit is the pay now as an fy2 doctor your annual pay starts at thirty-two thousand pounds a year that's if you're not doing any on calls or any night shifts or any um, hours that are not core hours. So weekends, nights and um, evenings. So as the more you do in terms of hours of night shifts and weekends, you'll get something called banding, which is an uplift on your pay. And that will be proportionate to how many on calls and nights that you're doing. So your pay will start at 32, but go up, but could go up towards 36 or 37,000 pounds for the year as well. As I said, specialty training uh, starts on the first Wednesday of every August, so that will be the day you rotate into a new year group. So with your pay, like I said, the other thing people are really interested in is the NHS pension. Now, the pension contribution at FY2 will be anywhere between two to 300 pounds a month. Uh, but the key thing there is that your employer, which is the NHS, will match whatever you're putting in. So whatever your employee contribution is to your pension, your employer puts in the same which means it's almost like an additional source of pay. Uh, and the payout at the end of your pension is extremely good. Again, that is something to go into detail closer to the time because the NHS pension does change from time to time. One of the key things about the pension is that you can draw it anywhere in the world. So you don't have to be UK based. So if you retire and move abroad, you can still draw your pension as normal, yeah. which is really important for um, doctors coming from other countries in case they do want to retire back to their home countries. Other benefits, um, every hospital, pretty much every hospital has on-site accommodation. And as international medical graduates, that can be a real source of worry is that how am I going to maintain a life? How am I going to live? Where am I going to live? I don't understand the bills and taxes and everything like that. You don't have to worry. So most hospitals will have accommodation, um, which will be a, a monthly uh, rent. And essentially that will cover you for all your bills, all your council taxes, your rent, everything is included in that. And it's not expensive. It's about three to 400 pounds per month and it will get uh, cut at source. So you will get your pay and the, um, your accommodation, your rent will have already been taken off. 
So that's a really nice thing to have in your first year of working here because you can get your feet under the desk, you can start working in the system, you can settle in over six months, then you can start looking forward. What do I want to do? Where do I want to work? Where do I want to live? So then you can start looking at those options. Again, your uh, educational supervisor and your colleagues will be a great source, source of um, advice and input once you're here. Now, um, the other thing I wanted to do, those are really the main benefits of working in the NHS. There are some small perks such as discounts in certain shops. Uh, I think um, Apple do a slight discount for NHS employees. So there are little other little perks and benefits as well. And obviously your other big uh, benefit is it's a training system. So you will come into the NHS as FY2 and if you go down a training program, you will emerge as either a consultant or uh, an associate specialist or a GP, depending on whatever route you want to take. Equally, if you don't want to train, you can train to a certain level and then think, actually, I'm fine where I am. I'd like to just locum now and come out of the training program system and just be a locum doctor. That's an option as well. You can become a self-employed locum doctor. So there's a lot of flexibility uh, in the way uh, the NHS allows you to work. Quickly, I just want to talk about my personal experience. So I uh, moved to the UK from, uh, from Pakistan. I was uh, 16 years old um, and I did my A-levels in London. I then got, admit, got admission into Bristol Medical School. Um, I did my undergraduate training in Bristol. After that, I was offered an FY1 job in Telford where I've never been. It was some hundred miles away, knew nothing about it. Uh, almost like an IMG going into Shropshire and the black country. And essentially I just took the uh, hospital accommodation without really thinking. I said, yep, I'll stay in, uh, in the hospital accommodation. My first job was acute stroke. I then did uh, breast surgery and anesthetics ITU. And during F1, I applied, I believe for uh, Birmingham because it was nearby and I got Birmingham training for FY2. Um, made some really good friends who all were going to Birmingham as well. So my social circle from FY1 moved on to Birmingham and surrounding areas as well. Um, and after that, I applied for GP training after my, during my FY2. Again, I applied for Birmingham, didn't get in. I got into Coventry and Warwickshire, which is about 30 miles down the road. And that's not a problem. So you pack your bags and uh, get in your car and off you go to wherever your new job is. And, and yeah, so I did my GP training there. So GP training is three years long. So during my FY2, I took my MSRA. I had my interviews, got into GP training in Coventry. My, uh, so in GP training, your specialties are six months long. So you only do two specialties a year. And again, you have half a day protected teaching every week. You still have your online portfolio that I still do now. As a, a GP, I still have to maintain an online portfolio. Um, and during my ST1 year, I settled into training. During my ST2 year, I took my AKT exam, which I passed first attempt, and you sort of study for that as while you're working. And after your AKT is your CSA exam. Again, these are, court, these are exams and courses that we teach um, at WH Medical as well. Again, pass CSA first attempt. And I, after three years of GP training, I uh, qualified and started working as a GP. And as I say, the rest is history. In one of my jobs, I'd met Dr. Ahmed uh, and Dr. Wahid, as you know, and we set up this company. And this is something we do on top of having maintaining full-time jobs as, so I work in a GP surgery and a prison service as well. And I do minor surgery and I'm hopefully starting my diploma in diabetes soon as well. So you know, there's lots of scope. There are many hours in the day, so you can do as much as you like. Dr. Salinka, any, any questions for me? Anything I haven't touched on? Uh, no, you. I, I think you covered everything. Sorry, I didn't have slides. I just thought it would be easier for me to just talk through these things and experiences. I think it's, um, it's almost nicer to have it as a conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. That's okay. I agree with you, Dr. Um, Harun. That was really... It was short, but it was everything in there that you could ever <laughs> think about the UK. Um, sorry, can I? Is it is it possible if I like wrap it in Bahasa? Yeah, of course. For our viewers. Okay. 
So basically, uh, teman-teman, jadi tadi di cover tentang structural learnings, additional studies, apalagi tentang culture dan ekspektasinya di UK, uh, bagaimana ya? Jadi harus mereka disiplin banget kalau dilihat di sini punctuality nomor satu, kita harus komunikasi sama pasien, sama dokter, terus nggak cuma itu juga, tapi patient itu nomor satu sama mereka. Jadi kindness sama integrity itu nomor satu di situ ya. Um, apa namanya benefitsnya juga banyak yaitu uh, dari awal aja kalau kamu bukan masuknya masih dari awal belum ada banyak uh, apa namanya kerjaan yang di handle itu aja mulainya dari 30 32000 uh, pounds per tahun ya terus pensiunnya lebih bagus lagi nih pensiunnya misalnya kalian udah pensiun di uh, di UK tapi kalian misalnya balik ke di Indonesia itu kalian tetap bisa ngambil itu bagus banget sih kalau menurut aku. Terus accommodation, mereka juga nggak biarin kali, kalian aja, cuma segitunya. Itu pasti ada akomodasi dan itu mulai dari 300 pound untuk include bill. Gitu ya. Um, silakan teman-teman kalau ada pertanyaan, boleh ditanyakan langsung uh, di chat. Sambil kalau misalnya uh, dokter Harun atau dokter Selingka ngobrol, nggak apa-apa chat uh, bales aja, apa itu, uh, kirim aja pertanyaannya, ntar kita bisa kumpulin buat uh, di akhir ya. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Harun, for that. <laughs> no problem. Any any questions for me? Anything at all? Not yet. That's why. Not just yet. Not yet. Ahead. I'm pretty sure that the question will come up soon. That's fine. Kalau kalian nggak nggak tahu, misalnya masih belum clear dari Dr. Harun, boleh ya langsung tanyakan tentang misalnya structured structured learnings kayak gimana sih dok specificallynya atau boleh kasih example. Boleh. Itu. Silakan ditanyakan di chat ya. Um, in the meantime, Selinka, should we do a five minute break while they take it all in <laughs> before you start? Yeah, we can actually um, play our video, like from GGH video while.